Okay, I'm Stephen Cook, and uh, we're bringing another uh, band blade uh, informational video to you. We've been talking about a lot of things, and gonna try to bring a couple of things together today, dealing with your. Uh, uh, we're gonna talk about band blade speed, particularly, but everything influences that. Your tooth spacing uh, set affects it a little bit, not so much, uh, but your tooth spacing purpose of your gullet. But specifically, I want to talk about the band blade speed. This is something that's very important. Uh, again, we're talking about uh, uh, the, the thin kerf sawmill bandsaw blade. I'll mention the resaw right at the end maybe, but uh, inch and a quarter, inch and a half blades mostly is what I'm talking about now. One inch does come into play some. But um, what you need to know and what we have learned through years and years of experimentation is that we want to run on a 26 inch band wheel is our larger band mill that we build we want to run around 5,000 feet per minute uh, not rpm and that can be and, and i'm talking in some round numbers 5500 might not be too bad we don't want to go any faster than 5500 feet per minute on a band sawmill uh, but again i emphasize this is not rpm uh, rpm is your round per minute i'm talking about feet per minute and I'll break that on down so that you get a little grasp what we have found really I'll give you the the gist up front as I talk about this uh, what we have found is that the faster you turn that blade uh, you can turn it faster RPM that does give you more feet per minute but if you get above uh, 5500 and like I said we even like to stay a little below that threshold 5000 feet per minute your, your uh, sawdust just turns to flour. It is so fine. And then you also are causing some vibrations, harmonic vibrations that are a problem. So I want to break this down for you so you'll get a little grasp and maybe it'll make a little more sense to you and, and, and you'll kind of have a wow factor, at least I do. When we're talking about 5,000 feet per minute, if I use a 14 foot blade, now that is on our smaller mill, but if I, I'm just using this for uh, simple figures really, just a, a popular blade. Uh, if I divide 5,000 feet per minute by 60 seconds, I get 83 feet per second. On that 14 foot bandsaw blade, when I divide that all out, if I start right here at the end, say that was the weld, and we are turning that, 83 feet per second draw, uh, makes that blade, this cut right here, go through that board that you're cutting, through the log you're cutting, six times per second. Six times per second. I've, I've heard Tim, my brother, talk about this, and, uh, and we talk about it from time to time, and, and, and this time I sat down and done the math, and I go, six times per second. You can't even blink that fast. That's how fast these teeth are going through there. So if I break that down a little bit further, and I just use one inch for a, uh, usually we use seven eighths two spacing, but I'll use one inch two spacing. You've got 168 teeth in that 14 foot blade. Uh, if I assume that I'm moving forward in the cut, if I'm cutting the log at 40 feet per minute, 40 feet per minute, I break all that down and do the division, and we can do that if enough people want us to do it, so we can show you how we're getting all these specific numbers. But if I'm going forward at 40 feet per, feet per minute, that is uh, 8 inches per second. Okay, if you, if you divide all that out, <laughs> that would give you 40 feet per minute, but 8 inches per second. So we're moving 8 inches every second. Uh, if I break that on down, that means that each tooth, every little tooth that's going through there, is getting about eight thousandths. Point zero zero eight is eight thousandths of a bite into the wood. And uh, so, just for, for a comparison there, a sheet of uh, notebook paper or copy paper, maybe a little bit thicker, it's two to three thousandths. So you're getting about three to four thousandths <laughs> of um, or three to four times the sheet of a paper every time you're cutting. You're, it's, and that's why it looks like flour. It just becomes so thin. Well, the problem with thin or small, smaller uh, granules of sawdust is, is really not, a, it is a true dust. It's not the chunks like the old circle mill used to have. But the problem with that is the 
we've, I think we've already talked about the gullet. The purpose of the gullet is to catch this sawdust and get it out. If it becomes so fine, it spills over the side of your blade, out, out over the side here, then that can cause uh, heat buildup. And so then we try to slow down, which now, guess what? Now you're only getting two thousandths per tip, and you're calling, causing smaller particles, and they're spilling over. You're getting less of it there, but you're spilling over more. So you get this, this, this kind of a point of diminishing return where all these things have to work together. But you don't want a lot. Some does is always left, we know, on, on the cut or, or, or on the board after you finish the cut. But, but that's what we're talking about. Six times per second, that tooth is going through the wood. Eight thousandths. <clears throat> we slow down, we get less than that. We speed up in the cut. Sometimes we find that people are actually slowing a little too slow in the cut forward. If you go, if you go down and you go to 20 feet per minute, you're only going four inches. You just cut everything in half. Uh, if everything is adjusted right, it's fine, it's not a problem. If you have something a little bit out of adjustment and you're turning higher speeds, you tend to get the dipping and diving. That's what causes all of that. And then if you're going, if you're trying to cut faster, sawdust spilling over, it gives you heat, heat buildup. So, uh, some practical, if you have smaller wheels, the, the hobby mills, 16 inch wheels or so, I've seen some advertise at 12 inch. I wouldn't want to turn those wheels, uh, we don't build one that small, but I wouldn't want to turn that more, uh, more than 3,500 or 4,000 feet per minute, feet per minute. Medium sized wheels uh, in the 19 inch range, we have our MP32 that's that size. We, we turn that maybe around 4,500 feet per minute. Uh, our larger diameter wheels, 26 inch wheels, we're turning like I said into 5,000 feet per minute. So, what this means is uh, the faster you're turning that, the faster you need to cut in that. That gives you bigger granule, uh, granules of sawdust, if you would, rather than flour. That is the advantage of our uh, super sharp blade, by the way, is we have more penetration, which lets us go further forward. And uh, down here in the south, we have grits, and we get more of a grit sawdust than a flour sawdust with our super sharp blade. And that's the advantage. We get better penetration, which lets you move forward faster. Uh, the other advantage of turning slower, and we have ran, we, at, at one time we were thinking, hey, the faster we turn this thing, the faster we're going to cut. And we, we built a mill that turned about 6,500 feet per minute. And uh, you had vibrations that come into play, uh, which causes your blade life to, to shorten. It's hard to get uh, any mill with a, with a diesel engine running on it to get rid of all the vibrations. The faster you turn everything, uh, belts, uh, belted wheels, all of those things cause pieces of vibration. The faster you turn it, the more vibration you get. So. Uh, conversely, the slower you turn it, the less vibrations you get. And we found that problems went away. We've had people change and slow their speeds down. They've had machines turning 7,000, I think even 8,000 feet per minute, and they were just going crazy. And we had them slow down to 6,000 or 5,000. Sometimes you have a, a frequency drive that you can slow those down with, with certain machines, but we found that is better. Now. The other side, I talked about sawing speed in the cut. Um, if, if you uh, are able to, uh, or if you will take time and adjust uh, your mill out so that you know that your roller guides are, have the blade straight away, that uh, we'll talk about this at another time, but so that your band wheels are adjusted so they're proper in their vertical adjustment. We like them leaning forward just a little bit, but, but certainly you don't want them leading back because they want to go up in the cut. But if you get everything adjusted properly, change your roller guides uh, as they need to be. Don't run them for years and not change them. Even if you think, well, I just bought them, sometimes they're worn out. Uh, one that sticks, it'll, it'll wear out almost immediately. But anyway, if you get everything adjusted properly, you might run 50 feet per minute, 60 feet per minute. Um, we, we can run 60 feet per minute without too much trouble. Now when it gets away from here and the customer has it, if they don't keep it adjusted, that's not always every day at all. That's not every day at all. 
but three months, six months, you slam a log into something, you got to check that adjustment as it needs to be done. Now, I, I mentioned resaws briefly. briefly. <clears throat> They're running one inch wide blades usually and uh, also uh, inch and a quarter blades. We have resaws uh, out there that we've helped the people adjust their, their machines properly. They're getting 100 feet per minute, but they're sawing narrower pieces. I think some of them are getting even 125 feet per minute. So they're going through, they're getting a little bit bigger piece of uh, uh, sawdust, and they're able to rake that thing out, and it just does a, a really good job. But one of the key things in, in resaw or in saw mills and the resawing applications is to check that blade speed. Again, uh, wouldn't run anything over 5,500 unless I had some super special case. But 5,500 is, is tops of, of what we find in the sawmill application. 